I've waited all now to do my own thoughts on what happened in Dublin because I wanted to let the situation calm down because people were reacting with, um, shall we say, th- shout first and think later attitude. Some of that's understandable. Irish society has changed a great deal over the last 20 or 30 years. And there has been a large degree of emigration to the country, which has prompted some of those changes. However, what we saw in in Dublin wasn't exactly a great way to debate or handle those changes. We saw a reaction that was violent, ill-tempered, ill-mannered. I don't want to hear from respondents that this is this is how to handle it or this is how to protest it. I don't think um, the buses burnt were immigrant buses. I don't think they popped over on a ceiling ferry or got off a jumbo jet down at Shannon Airport. No, do I think a Lewis tram did. Um, yes, there are, is a debate to be had about the amount of immigration to a small country like Ireland or even a much bigger country like the UK where I'm sitting right now. The debate is not to be had on the streets by throwing bricks through windows or looting footlockers. There were endless comments on endless channels about how everybody nicking from those shops was foreigners. No, they bloody weren't. You could see quite quite easily looking at the footage that it was a a mixture of people doing it, and many of them were local youths doing it. There are many deprived areas in Dublin, just as there are in London, and I can understand the frustration of people who are unemployed, often don't have any great options and they feel pushed out of their own areas and feel like these people coming in are getting everything and they're getting nothing. However, that's a classic case of divide and rule going on there. The people coming in are not to blame for what happened in their own homelands and people have been pitted against each other in an unpleasant manner. The Irish government, I will say, has unfortunately... uh, Open open borders is not what it's doing. That's been said on some channels, and that's ridiculous. That's not what's happening. But it has allowed far too many people in in a constant stream at once. You cannot allow things like 87,000 Ukrainians in in a couple of years, and where the total is now spiralling up, up and up and out of control. Ireland, up until recently, was a very homogenous society. My family come from, came from a very rural part of Ireland to live in England. That behind me is a picture of the Rune Church, behind where my Uncle Martin and Aunt Nancy lived. It sat across from their house. It was hundreds of years old and was destroyed in part during the Reformation. The village it's in, Goron, is a small village which it was very homogenous with basically you had a village shop, a couple of pubs and a post office. That was it. That was your world's entertainment there. You were to stay there. However, it was also a very friendly local place and you could leave doors open or walk in and out people's houses. So these kind of areas don't respond well to a large number of people coming to live there from very different cultures. And that does have to be taken into account. Even Mr. Lefty Liberal like me will admit that. I do feel the government in Dublin seems to be essentially playing three wise monkeys with the situation, though, and ignoring that. They've now got to the point where you have around a fifth of people in Ireland are immigrants. This does create tensions in the society, and it doesn't matter whether you're left or right wing, you can't ignore it. As it stands with Ukrainian refugees, there's nowhere to house them. You're not helping people by having a sudden influx of people come in where you can't put them anywhere. All you're doing is moving them from one bad situation to another bad situation. You had people trying to reactivate old army bases or have them sleeping in tents. At one point, you had them sleeping on the airport floors at Shannon or on the street. So I have to ask, what was the use in that? You also have a growing homelessness crisis in Ireland, which the government seems to be kind of effectively doing well, sweet Fanny Adams about. They, you know, I can absolutely understand the anger of locals. It doesn't matter if Mr. Local, Mr. Lefty like me goes on about it and pretends it's not there. To a family living on benefits and on the street, their anger is going to be very real and they're going to react by punching if they've got nowhere to live. 
the government in Ireland really does need to be changed as well, but it doesn't need to have have people like Justin Barrett or the National Party. I don't see them as a solution. All they will do is use migrants and foreigners as scapegoats and pick on them and create another situation that's even worse. The Irish themselves have been the victims of bigotry and prejudice in many lands they've moved to. And to see that repeated in a, in the country itself is very sad, partly due to misguided policies that were originally instituted with the best will in the world. But there's no point in offering charity to people unless you can actually provide it. There's no point in me telling 100 people to come and live in my house if I don't have room to put that 100 people. I'm not doing anything useful for them. All I've done is, is offer them something I can't give. And this was the problem with many of the situations with Ireland. Ireland has reached a capacity level for refugees or migrants. And I would say now is a time to call a halt for a while, assess the level of housing, find all these people homes, sort out those issues and sort out homes, most importantly for Irish citizens, and then move on from there. Otherwise, even I will admit there will be repeats of what was seen in Dublin. It will happen again. The, lo the locals in those areas in Dublin will feel that they are pushed to the wall and they will react. It is an inevitability.